look at strategic performance management. Strategic planning is a process that involves describing the organization's destination, assessing barriers that stand in the way, and deciding how to move forward. The mere presence of a strategic plan does not guarantee that this information will be used effectively as part of the performance management system. On the way to formalize the link between strategic planning and performance management is through the implementation of a balanced scorecard. In a nutshell, a balanced scorecard involves creating indicators of individual performance along four separate perspectives of an organization's success. To be most useful and impactful, an organization's performance management system must rely on its strategic plan. Job descriptions, which serve as roadmaps for what individuals are supposed to do and what results will be produced, must be aligned with the vision, mission, objectives, and strategies of the organization and unit. The HR function can play a critical role in creating and implementing the strategies that will allow the organization to realize its mission and vision. Specifically, the HR function can make the following contributions. The HR function can be a good conduit to communicate the various components of the strategic plan, like mission, vision, and objectives, to all employees. The HR function, through work analysis, understands the KSAs needed for successful implementation of the strategic plan. They can offer suggestions about what types of employees should be hired and what training put in place. The HR function can provide useful information on what type of compensation system should be implemented to motivate employees to support the strategic plan. In addition to serving as a necessary guide for individual and team performance, clarity around mission and vision shows HR how to design the performance management system. Knowledge of the vision and mission results from the strategic planning process. This allows the HR function to serve as an internal consultant and to make informed decisions about performance management design choices. An environmental analysis identifies external and internal parameters to understand broad issues related to the context and industry where the organization operates. Decisions can be made against the backdrop of this broader context. An examination of the external environment includes a consideration of the opportunities and threats an organization faces. Opportunities are characteristics of the environment that can help the organization succeed. Threats are the characteristics of the external environment that can prevent the organization from being successful. A common framework for understanding industry-based threats is now the classic work by Michael Porter's Five Force Analysis. These include three forces from horizontal competition, like the threat of substitute products or services, the threat of established rivals, and the threat of new entrants, and two forces from vertical competition, like bargaining power of suppliers and the bargaining power of customers. To complement the more general five-force analysis, the following non-exhaustive list of external factors should be considered in any environmental analysis. Economic. Is there an economic recession on the horizon, or is the current economic recession likely to end in the near future? How could these economic trends affect our business? Political or legal. How will political changes, domestically or in international markets, that we're planning on entering affect our entry strategy? Social. What's the impact of entry of millennials in the workforce or the massive retirement of baby boomers? Technological. What technological changes are anticipated in our industry and how will those changes affect how we do business? Competitors. How do the strategies and products of our competitors affect our own strategies and products? Can we anticipate our customers or competitors' next move? Customers. What do our customers want now, and what will they want in the next five years or so? Can we anticipate these needs? Suppliers. 
What's the relationship with our suppliers now, and is it likely to change, and in what way, in the near future? An examination of external trends is critical for businesses of all sizes, but it's particularly challenging for multinational organizations because they're concerned with both domestic and international trends. An examination of the internal environment includes a consideration of strengths and weaknesses. Strengths are the internal characteristics that the organization can use to its advantage. Weaknesses are internal characteristics that are likely to hinder the success of the organization. These could include the misalignment of objectives or talent pool with skills that have become obsolete given changes in the industry and in technology. The following is a non-exhaustive list of internal issues that should be considered by any environmental analysis. Organizational structure. Is the current structure conducive to fast and effective communication? Organizational culture. Organizational culture includes unwritten norms and values espoused by members of the organization. Is there a culture in which new ideas and suggestions are quickly suppressed with the argument that this has never been done before? Politics. Are various units competing for resources in such a way that any type of cross-unit collaboration is virtually impossible? Or are units likely to be open and collaborative in cross-unit projects? Processes. Are supply chains working properly? Are all touch points with customers working properly? Can customers reach us when they need to, and do they receive a satisfying response when they do? Size. Is the organization too small or too large? Are we growing too fast? Will we be able to manage growth or downsizing effectively? After external and internal issues have been considered, information is collected regarding opportunities, threats, strengths, and weaknesses. This information is used to conduct a gap analysis, which analyzes the external environment in relation to the internal environment. The pairing of external opportunities and threats with internal strengths and weaknesses leads to the following situation ranked from most to least competitive. Opportunity plus strength equals leverage. The best combination of external and internal factors occurs when there's an opportunity in the environment and matching strength within the organization to take advantage of that opportunity. Opportunity plus weakness equals constraint. In the constraint situation, the external opportunity is present. However, the internal situation is not conducive to taking advantage of the external opportunity. Threat plus strength equals vulnerability. In this situation, there's an external threat, but this threat can be contained because of the presence of internal strengths. Threat plus weakness equals problem. In the worst case scenario, there's an external threat and an accompanying internal weakness. The process of creating a strategic plan begins with an environmental analysis, also called a SWOT analysis, which considers internal as well as external trends. Internal trends that are classified as either strengths or weaknesses, and external trends can be classified as either opportunities or threats. A SWOT analysis offers critical information for all organizations. After the environmental analysis has been completed, the members of the organization must determine who they are and what they do. This information will then be incorporated into the organization's mission statement. The mission statement of an organization summarizes the most important reason for its existence. Mission statements provide information on the purpose of the organization and its scope. Mission statements provide answers to the following questions. Why does the organization exist? What is the scope of the organization's activities? Who are the customers served? And what are the products and services offered? Based on the mission statement, we have information about why the company exists and the scope of the organization's activities. Mission statements can also include information about the organization's values and beliefs, and these are sometimes listed separately. In short, 
A mission statement defines why the organization exists, the scope of its activities, the customers served, and the products and services offered. An organization's vision is a statement of future aspirations. In other words, the vision statement includes a description of what the organization would like to become in the future about five or ten years out. Vision statements are typically written after the mission statement is completed. The organization needs to know what their purpose is before they figure out where it is they want to go in the future. However, mission and vision statements are often combined, and therefore, in many cases, it's difficult to determine one from another. In such cases, the vision statement usually includes two components, a core ideology, which is referred to as the mission, and an envisioned future, which is what is referred to as the vision per se. The core ideology contains the core purpose and core values of the organization. The envisioned future specifies long-term objectives and a big picture of what the organization expires to do in the long term. There are a few features required of a useful vision statement. First, it should focus attention on what is most important and thus eliminate unproductive activities. Second, it provides a context from which to evaluate new external opportunities and threats. In addition, the best vision statements have the following characteristics. A vision statement should be brief so that employees can remember it. A good vision statement should be able to stand the reality test. A good vision statement specifies a timeline for the fulfillment of various aspirations. Outdated vision statements are not useful. Vision statements should be updated on an ongoing basis, ideally as soon as the old vision is fulfilled. A good vision statement is not a laundry list of aspirations, but rather focuses on just a few, perhaps not more than three, aspects of an organization's performance that are important to future success. Vision statements need to be written in clear and straightforward manner so that they are understood by all employees. Good vision statements make employees feel good about their organization's direction and motivate them to help achieve the vision. Whereas the mission statement emphasizes the present, the vision statement emphasizes the future. After an organization has analyzed its external opportunities and threats, as well as internal strengths and weaknesses, and has defined its mission and vision, it can realistically establish objectives that will further its mission. The purpose of setting such objectives is to formalize statements about what the organization hopes to achieve in the medium to long range period, like within the next three to five years. Objectives provide more specific information regarding how the mission will be implemented. Objectives also provide a good basis for making decisions by keeping the desired outcomes in mind. Objectives provide the basis for performance measurement because they allow for a comparison of what needs to be achieved versus what each unit, group, and individual is achieving. Objectives can also be a source of motivation and provide employees with a more tangible target for which to strive. With strong objectives, the entire organization has a clear sense of focus. All members know that there are clear objectives in terms of market presence, growth, sales, earnings, financial performance, and so on. At this point, we know what the organization is all about, its mission, and what it wants to be in the future, its vision, and what it needs to do to get there, its objectives. What remains is a discussion of how to fulfill the mission and vision and how to achieve the stated objectives. This is done by creating strategies, which are descriptions of game plans or how-to procedures to reach stated objectives. The strategies could address issues of growth, survival, turnaround, stability, innovation, talent acquisition, and leadership, among many others. The organization's strategic plan has a direct impact on the unit's strategic plans. 
Similarly, the vision statement, objectives, and strategies of the various units need to be congruent with the overall organization's vision, objectives, and strategy. The congruence between the mission of the organization and its various units is important, regardless of the type of industry and the size of the organization. High-performing organizations have a clear alignment in the mission and vision of the overall and unit-level mission and vision statements. The organization's strategic plan, including the mission, vision, objectives, and strategy, cascades down to all organizational levels. Thus, each division, branch, department, or unit also creates its own strategic plan, which should be consistent with the organization's overall plan. Job descriptions need to be congruent with the organization and unit, mission, vision, objectives, and strategies. Job descriptions are important because they serve as a roadmap for what individuals are supposed to do, how, and what results will be produced. Moreover, job descriptions are important for new employees because they set clear expectations from day one. So, if job descriptions are consistent with the organization and unit, mission, vision, objectives, and strategies, it's more likely that results produced by individuals and teams will contribute to the success of their units and the organization as a whole. The description provides information about the various tasks performed, together with a description of some of the KSAs required for the position. The tasks and KSAs included in individual job descriptions should include activities that, if executed well, will help execute the mission and vision. Job descriptions that are detached from strategic priorities will lead to performance evaluations focused on behaviors and results that are not central to an organization's success, and the performance management system will be seen as irrelevant or a big waste of time by managers and employees alike.